well, it's not strictly true. I have some concealer and primer and stuff on. Um, I am going to do a get ready with me whilst I do this video. Um, this is a collab with a bunch of people from Geeks and Beauties. October 10th is Mental Health Awareness Day or World Mental Health Awareness Day. And so we decided that we were going to do a collab around this and um, everybody's probably going to do their own kind of thing, but there is actually a tag, so some people will be doing that tag. Um, this is kind of like an amalgamation of about three different mental health tags that I found on uh, YouTube and blogs and stuff like that. I just took some things out and added the other stuff in. Um, so I'm going to do the mental health tag whilst I get my makeup on. Um, yeah, uh, probably because it's, uh, uh, it's a bit easy. It's, it's a little touchy. So I am going to put it out there right now. There are some things that I'll probably talk about which are uh, confronting or upsetting for some people. Um, so be aware of that. Um, it's also going to be a longer video, so you might want to grab a cup of tea first or a cup of coffee or something. Um, yeah, so just be aware. There might be some things that I talk about. I'm not going to say you need a trigger warning because I know for myself reading the words trigger warning uh, tends to be a trigger all of itself. So I'm not saying that, just saying be aware of the fact that I'm talking about things that can be upsetting to some people. Okay? So let's get into it. I've already, as I said, moisturized, primed. Um, I put some spot concealer on a couple of places that were like really, really red um, to try and help them. I'm also doing a first impression, which uh, might not be the best idea, but uh, yeah, so I am going to do a first impression of the Maybelline Fit Me uh, Dewy Smooth Normal to Dry Foundation. Um, I've got this in 115 Ivory. The reason I decided I was going to try this one is because the other foundations I've been using, I've been using a lot of ones that are supposedly uh, like matte and I don't think my skin likes that very much. I think it just makes my skin look dry and they don't seem to sit nicely on my face. I'm not sure if this is the right colour for me. I was looking at my uh, matte and pores version of Fit Me and it is lighter but clearly more yellow based. Um, I have pink undertones and this one looked a lot more pink. So I've just put some on the back of my hand. So the first question is what is your mental health issue? Uh, my mental health issue? Well I have several of them. Um, <laughs> the main overriding one is um, PTSD. Um, which is post-traumatic stress syndrome for anybody who does not know that. Um, I was abused as a child. Um, so I'm a sexual abuse survivor, but it has had a very long um, and quite devastating impact on my life in a lot of ways. Uh, combined with that, I have clinical depression. Um, I suffer from anxiety. And uh, I am borderline acrophobic. So, like, I can do this because I'm just talking to myself. Whereas, if I was uh, going out in public, I find quite stressful at times. Depends on how I'm going uh, mood wise. Um, and I also have a dissociative disorder, um, which means that I can, um, I kind of pull away emotionally from situations and so I will be present in a, in a physical sense but I won't really be engaging with the situation um, and I had that for quite a long time it's a much better under control now I feel myself when I'm dissociating now I know when it's happening so I can actually stop it from getting too bad because it used to be like being two people um, which <laughs> Uh, sounds just as bad as it actually is. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I have all of that going on. And yes, it is... Oh, stuck in my hair. It is quite a bit to deal with at times. Um, but yeah. 
So those are my mental health issues. Um, apparently I also probably um, have dysphoria, which is basically where your um, base baseline mood is actually quite lower, naturally quite lower than everyone else, like I was born that way. And having a traumatic childhood actually just made it worse. Um, so, so far with this foundation, it is pretty much doing what every other foundation does on my skin, which is it kind of sinks into everything, even though I'm using a pore smoothing primer, um, sinks into everything, especially my forehead creases. don't know that it looks particularly dewy on me, and it's not particularly full coverage or anything, but then again, I wasn't exactly putting on a heavy coat, because, yeah, um, but I don't know yet, I have to use it a couple of times before I decide whether or not I like it. Um, under my eyes, I'm going to put on some Age Rewind first, and then I'm going to put on some Fit Me. So the second question is, do you have medication or therapy? Um, I am on medication. I am currently using um, citalopram, um, also known as Cipramil. Although I am in the process of changing my meds, I don't know which med I'll be changing to yet. It's uh, I was just recommended by a psychiatrist to try something different, and uh, probably means I have to wean off my current meds uh, to go on to something different. Um, but I don't know what that med will be at this particular point in time. And um, I also have therapy. I see a psychologist about once a month. Um, I have been seeing the same psychologist for... Well, I've known him for over a decade. I've known him since before my youngest child was actually born. Um, I think it was 2003 or 2004, the first time I saw him. Um, and I have been seeing him pretty much on and off since then, and basically fairly solidly for about the last seven years, basically. Um, yeah, so, and he's really good. I like him. And he knows me really well. <laughs> he's, he's used to my weird bits and the things that I do and say, and uh, he doesn't tend to put up with any bullshit from me. Uh, some people are a little scared of, uh, like, pressuring me. Um, yeah, he's not. Um, question three is, what therapy medication have you tried and has any worked for you? So basically the main type of therapy I have is uh, CBT, or talk therapy. Um, CBT is also, it's a short form of cognitive behavioural therapy. Uh, so you think about behaviours and how you can change them to change the way that you feel. Um, it's, it's pretty effective. Um, I mean, some people would say, well, how come you're still having therapy if it's so effective? Um, because I have a lot of complex issues and uh, sometimes things happen in life that actually feed into my issues and it just like exacerbates it. And, you know, I could be doing really, really well for like six months and then something will happen and it will trigger it and I'll end up with like having a fairly uh, full on, uh, I refer to them as episodes, a period of time where I'm just not um, coping basically. So um, and the, the Supramil is the only medication I've been on. I, when I was younger I refused to go on meds, I probably should have, but I refused to, until um, about seven years ago when my best friend died, um, that's when I went on meds. I'm using the NYX HD powder, I'm just going to use that on the under eye area. I'm not going to bake because I don't really bake and every time I try to do that I end up with big white patches just looks nasty ass. Um, okay, number four. How long have you had 
problems for? Uh, well, probably since about the time that my parents um, divorced, which was when I was six, and we moved in with the person who ended up being my abuser. Um, so, but I can, I know at 11, I think it was about 11, I attempted to commit suicide. Um, so it was definitely a problem back then. Um, <laughs> clearly I wasn't successful because I'm here. And you know, when you're 11, you don't necessarily, like back then, you know, got to remember I'm 42, back then, um, you, there wasn't really, I didn't really know how to do it. I think I took like 10 Panadol. But, um, I'm also going to set the rest of my face with the uh, Physician's Formula Mineral Foundation Finishing Veil thing. I, it's one of the ones that's in one of my projects. I think it's put on a little bit. I hate my forehead creases. They're so deep and um, makeup just always creases in it. I have never ever found foundation or anything that does not just sink into it and crack and crease there. So, there you go. Um, okay, I am going to do a little bit of bronzing around my face. Um, the um, the first time I had any kind of therapy though was when I was in high school around about the time that um, my mum finally left my abuser um, and I was like 14 then. So that's when I first sort of stepped into therapy when all of the abuse stuff actually came out. Um, it wasn't until that came out that anybody really realised there was anything going on. Mainly because uh, I don't really talk about it. <laughs> well, I didn't really talk about it. And I was that kid that was like really happy and go lucky and, well, apparently so. And all my friends liked to hang around with me and, you know, get me to help them with their problems and stuff. And I didn't talk about what was going on. Um, I just did a bit of bronzing with my Avon bronzing pearls. Probably can't even tell. And then I'm going to grab my um, Astralis contouring kit. Do a tiny bit of contouring. I'm not 100% sure about this colour yet. Um, okay, number five. Describe your mental health issue in five words. Complex, um, ongoing, and um, unpleasant. <laughs> uh, what's that three? Tiring. Although exhausting would probably be a better word. Um, and challenging. Is it just me or does contour just look like mud on your face? I'm gonna try some of the put some of the warmer one over the top. Just try and neutralize it a little bit. It always looks worse on camera too, like what I'm, wow, it's like I have this sticky spot here where it just grabs on and looks terrible. I've also got a face steam in there and it's not helping matters at all. Just taking the lighter matte colour underneath that really not great contour. <laughs> Just, uh, I will uh, blend a bit more in a minute. Um, okay, so number six, do your family and friends know? Well, 
my family knows because, you know, they have to live with it on a daily basis. Um, my partner is extremely supportive. He has put up with a lot over the years, especially in the last seven years when things have got, like, really bad. That's one of the weird things with um, PTSD is sometimes the further you get away from whatever the trauma was, the worse um, the symptoms actually are, which makes it extra challenging. Um, but he has, he is amazing. And my kids are good. They, they have to put up with a lot with mummy being the way she, that she actually is. Um, so, yeah. Um, a lot of my friends probably know I'm very open about talking about mental health stuff um, because it is such a big part of my life and I do think it is like super duper important to uh, talk about it, not let it go, not let it be hidden. Uh, so I'm just using um, my LOL blush coral blush, this, this one here, which has got increasingly large pan on it, which is freaking great. Um, okay, so number seven. Does this affect your work and daily living? Well, yes, yes it does. Um, I've actually never held down a proper job for any kind of length of time. I've done a few voluntary type things and I've worked a couple of times for um, friends or family type things um, but I've never actually had a you know, full-time job or anything and a lot of that is because of my mental health issues in fact uh, things are a bit different here in Australia to what they are in other countries um, but uh, um, I'm on a payment which is called the disability support pension and I was actually basically told to go on it by Centrelink, which is our like social security here. Um, yeah, they basically said you need to go on this payment until you can try and get yourself sorted out. Um, that was four years ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to use some of the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in Cereo Rose, kind of as a blush topper and um, my highlighter because. I didn't grab a highlighter, but I grabbed this, so, um, this is, you know, it's, it's not normal highlighter for me because, you know, like, it's way too dark for that, but I quite like it, and it has a nice sheen to it, works well as a blush topper room to give you a bit of shine, um, I just won't be highlighting anywhere else with it because that won't work, anyway, um, okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit more of my um, Physician's Formula and just blend it out a little bit and subtle it down just a touch. It's what I generally do, um, mainly because I always think my contour and my bronzing and everything looks kind of ratchet. So, um, yeah, so it... Of course it has a massive impact on my daily life. Um, some days I'm fine and nobody would know anything and other days I can't get out of bed. <laughs> um, and I'll sleep for like 15 hours straight. Like after having slept for like 8 hours. Um, yeah, which it, it has a massive impact on what you can do and it impacts all the people who live around me as well. Um, quite a bit. I am going to attack my eyebrows with um, my little colour angled brush and my Essence Eyebrow Stylist, which is the lighter side. Um, I'm going to do this off camera and then I'll be back. Use some uh, more brows from Monaco as well on my eyebrows. Um, so the next one is, what do you do in a crisis? Um, it depends on how bad things are. If I am at my worst, like really, really struggling to deal with what's going on, 
Um, um, this is the designer brand's eye primer. Um, and I'm completely flipping out and you know, probably crying and carrying on. I will actually go and sit in our wardrobe. Uh, we have a walk-in wardrobe. It's not very big. There's enough room. I actually used to film in there. <laughs> Sitting on the floor. It's, it's, it's really not very big. But um, that's where I used to go uh, when things got really bad. I actually have not had the need to go into my wardrobe for quite some time now which is just considering some of the stuff that's been going on in my life in the last 12 months it's actually kind of a miracle um, but it's probably because I have like um, the people around me have become more and more aware of how I react to certain things um, I'm just going to set that with my lol face powder um, but usually my way of dealing with it depends on what's going on and who is around and what I can actually get away with. <laughs> um, if my partner's around, then I basically um, hand over to him for household running and I go in my bedroom. And I will um, play on my phone, um, watch pimple popping videos in particular, because I find them very relaxing. I know, it sounds weird, it is what it is. Um, if um, my partner is not around and I still have to kind of be present, um, I will put on my headphones um, or I will um, play a game on my computer where I have to have headphones on um, so that I distract myself from noise um, and have something like soothing in my ear. I find music particularly soothing. This is the Obscure Eye Pigment from Glamour Double Eyes that I am about to put in as my first transition. Um, but that's generally what I do is uh, music or um, just removing myself from other people. Um, or I'll go and have a shower. Um, the shower is like I refer to it as drowning myself, but I'm not really drowning myself. Um, but I like to go into the shower and uh, stay in there for far too long for water conservation um, reasons. But um, I pay my water bills, so um, I put way more on that side than I did on the other. Um, the brush I'm using is the Real Techniques one, and it like grabs the product, and then you try to like tap it off, and it just stays on there. <laughs> so I'll attempt to even things up a little. So the next question is, what advice would you give to others who are suffering? Well, number one is you you need to take care of yourself, um, and you need to put yourself first. Um, so. Um, and you need to find someone that you can actually talk to. Which, you know, it sounds really simple, and I know it's not. And not everybody has somebody that they can just, like, talk to, or they don't think they should talk to somebody. But there are services available um, in basically every country of the world. There is some kind of um, helpline, uh, suicide line, all that kind of stuff. There's also, which I will look up again and put down the bottom. There's actually a service that you can use. It's different depending on what country you're in, um, but basically um, using uh, MAC eyeshadow, I don't know what colour it is, it's dark brown. Um, you basically, um, you text to this number and a um, trained counsellor will actually text you back and you can have a text conversation because I know for me like I don't always just like I don't want to verbalize but um, I'm quite happy to send like text, mes text messages and stuff so that can be something to do um, you should also go and see your doctor and talk to your doctor 
Uh, I know not everybody wants to go on medication, but sometimes short term on medication is actually a really, really good idea because it can help you take the necessary steps to start getting healed. Um, but the main thing I would say is to be kind to yourself. Try not to beat yourself up if you're having like a bad day and you don't want to engage with other people. And that's fine. You don't have to engage with people all the time if that's not what's working for you. Um, yeah, but the main thing is, is reach out to somebody. There's sure to be somebody that you know um, that can help you. And sometimes it's being involved with groups of people who are like-minded. Um, I know on quite a lot of the groups I'm in, uh, people will post there about issues that they're having because it's a small confined group that um, they trust and it usually helps but definitely uh, look for the services that are in your state, county, country, whatever. Um, yeah, it's, it's not easy to ask for help sometimes. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of this other MAC colour. I don't know what it is. Uh, uh, the next question is, what is the hardest part of living with a mental illness? Um, well, the fact that it limits your functionality as a human being is high on the list of what makes it really, really hard. Um, the other thing, of course, is the stigma that is associated with mental illnesses. You get a lot of the um, people saying things to you like, you know, you should just move on, you know, just try to be happy, maybe you should go for a walk, all that kind of stuff, which is actually ridiculously unhelpful. Um, and it actually makes the person who's talking to you think like that you're not the person to talk to. So there's that. Um, but it affects a lot of things. Like when you're borderline agoraphobic or agoraphobic, you don't want to go out in public. You don't want to be involved with other people very much. You find it more difficult to socialize. I mean, I find it difficult to socialize online even sometimes. Um, it's usually how you can tell I'm having a bit of a bad go is if I'm not um, involved with like the groups and stuff if I like go silent. I tend to be a very big lurker, so you know, I'll be reading everything that happens but not actually engaging in any of it. Um, yeah, so yeah, the, the stigma thing is a pain in the butt, but also just the fact that it has, uh, just makes life harder. There's, there's no doubt about that, it just makes life harder. Um, not to say that other things don't make life hard, but it's one of those things, it's like a silent illness. All silent illnesses are um, very hard to live with because people can't see that there's anything wrong. So they they don't realise something's wrong. Um, I also suffer from another silent illness, which is Hashimoto's, which you can't tell by looking at me, but um, it impacts what I do a lot as well. Uh, now, on my lid, I'm actually going to put on this super bright turquoise. Uh, this is the room will scandalise in tempting turquoise. Uh, number 11. What is something that surprised you about your illness or recovery? Um, I think the main thing that surprised me is not actually a positive thing uh, and that is the fact that it is taking so long. It's just like there's the part of your brain that's saying, you know, you should you should be done with this by now. Like, you've had all of this therapy, you've taken these medications, you've talked it to death, you've, you know, you've gone through all of this stuff, and, you know, why why are you not better yet? Why are you, why are you still doing this? You know, why are you still having these thought processes and these flashbacks and the, you know, why are you still having days where you basically cease to function for 
extended periods of time and you, know, you should be should be over this by now um, and I am actually incredibly logical about things and it makes it very difficult when you're suffering from a mental illness because I know what I'm saying sometimes is not logical or rational it doesn't stop those thoughts from actually occurring um, and it's one of the things they've actually studies have actually shown that people who are you know pretty intelligent and pretty self-aware they tend to have a harder time not to say that other people don't but they have actually shown that um, people who um, have fairly high intelligence um, deal with mental illness in a much less successful way because they're constantly questioning why they are like that and why can't they just be normal and why am I thinking and they just they just don't accept that they're actually ill. I took a really long time to accept there was actually anything wrong with me. Um, and by the time I did, I was in my 30s and you know, I had kids and, and everything kind of fell apart, kind of thing. Um, I'm going to take what from my Kat Von D metal map palette. I'm not actually going to pick it up because it's done here. Um, yeah, so that was the thing that surprised me, is that it, it has taken so long. And I get so frustrated that it was taking me so long to recover. Um, and the sad fact of the matter is uh, I won't ever recover fully. It's a chronic condition. Uh, it will always be a factor. It will always play a part in my life, no matter what else happens. Um, yeah, that's a pretty hard thing to actually accept, <laughs> sometimes. Uh, and that actually um, holds back your um, recovery because you're constantly fighting against this thing that you want to go away and it just it, it just won't because that's not how it works so, uh, the next question is what is one false assumption about your particular disorder that you wish to correct correct um, probably the main one is the PTSD one which is that um, there is a lot of stuff in the media in particular and I've even seen it on like Facebook and stuff like that that um, PTSD is something that soldiers suffer from it's, it's you know something that the, the veterans get um, and it kind of like excludes this whole group of people who have never been in that situation but they have suffered some quite bad trauma. A lot of people who have been abused in some kind of way have some form of PTSD or another um, and particularly uh, those who have suffered from sexual abuse that has been hidden or are denied as being a thing, which is what our Royal Commission in Australia is doing at the moment uh, about institutionalised um, child abuse. Um, part of the reason that it was so bad for a lot of them, and a lot of them have PTSD, is that they were never believed. And so it was never dealt with properly. Um, and basically with trauma, the sooner you do something about it, like the sooner you get some therapy or some help for it, the more likely it is that you will actually have a positive outcome later on. Um, mine was not properly dealt with uh, at the time, and as a result, it um, came back full force later on. Um, the other thing is that, like I said, I have anxiety. People think that anxiety, like they think when you see an anxiety attack, that it's like in the movies where somebody's like um, 
sort of rocking backwards and forth or doing something like that and that's just not what it is it's just not like that not for everybody not for, not for a lot of people panic attacks are more like that generally not always everybody's different um but um anxiety attacks um are usually silent uh if i'm having i'm just using uh rimmel scandalize in bright blue under my eyes because can um when I'm having an anxiety attack, I don't look any really any different on the outside, but if you could see my blood pressure and my heart rate, they both go up quite a bit. Um, I tend to breathe very heavily, um, and um, yeah, it's people who who don't know what to look for won't even notice it. My partner's got very good at recognising the signs now. Um, I'm using Nebula from Kat Von D over that blue, just a smudge in a bit. Um, yeah, so, and also the fact that, you know, most people are just like, you should just be able to get over mental illness. Everybody has bad stuff happen to them. Why can't you just like get over it? And it's like, you know, dude, everybody's different. Everybody has different experiences and different ways of coping with things like different types of trauma. And just because you might be really good at dealing with trauma doesn't mean that everybody is. And particularly when the initial trauma is uh, denied. I'm just blowing it out a little bit under the eyes with the obscure, sort of meeting it up with the upper bit. We're, we're ending up quite grungy today by the look of things. <laughs> and I complain. Um, okay, so number 13, what is one false assumption about mental illness in general that you wish to create? Correct. Um, that people who have mental illness are just lazy. We, we are not lazy. A lot of us are working, um, a lot of people with mental illness work every single day and they work really, really hard and you wouldn't know it because they don't exactly, um, advertise it. And people don't advertise it because there's such stigma about being mentally ill. Um, and there are a lot of people who still don't believe that mental illness is actually a thing. They're just like, no, you're just, you just don't want to work or, you know, you're weak or whatever. Um, using the Lancome Le Crayon in Noir. Um, I got a lot of people denying that anything could possibly have happened to me and that anything could be wrong with me because the person that I was accusing was a member of a church and was a decent person and all that kind of stuff, supposedly. Um, I've had people tell me that I should just put it in the past and move on and not dig up old dirt and, um, yeah, just, just let it go. It's... And that is um, not how it works. I mean, for some people, they can actually do that. Uh, other people, they can't. And I'm one of the other people. This is the BYS Pearlized Eyeliner. It's kind of like dark grey. Um, yeah, so, you know, as I said, everyone's different. Everyone deals with these things differently. And just because... Uh, somebody tells you that you should just be able to get over it. They clearly have no understanding about how the brain actually works. It has to do with different um, parts of the brain and how they actually process information. And um, they're supposed to be quite 
elastic, um, the, I think it's the medulla at the back, it's supposed to be really elastic, but when you suffer from PTSD and you get into negative thought processes, it can actually uh, prevent it from being elastic and you get stuck in thought processes and can't move on. There's a lot of brain chemistry stuff that goes into mental illness and I just wish that people would stop assuming that the people who suffer from mental illness are just being lazy or um, whatever because they're not. And most people with mental illness, if they could just make it go away, like if it would just go away, they would be so happy. They would be like, thank you. It's like, I feel normal again. Which is funny because you know, one of the questions I get asked a lot is what would normal feel like? Um, and I'm really not sure anymore what normal would feel like. <laughs> it's been such a long time. Um, my wings don't match whatsoever. But that is nothing unusual. This one just keeps getting longer and longer. Ah, the joys of trying to do a wing. Oh well. Um, I'm going to set those with uh, Jet from my Metal Man palette. Um, number 14. What is something that makes you feel calm? Uh, music makes me feel calm. Um, playing uh, certain games, uh, particularly ones that require my brain to do more activity, like think, uh, actually calms me down because it shifts my focus from whatever negative thing that I'm thinking. Um, and um, pimple popping videos, or medical type videos. Um, a lot of people might think I'm like really, really sick, but I, I love pimple popping videos. <laughs> There's actually a very good reason for it too, in terms of um, the reason why people find them quite calming. Uh, this is the Rimmel Exaggerate in Nude, I think it's called. Um, so, you may have heard of people who hurt themselves, and part of the reason that people hurt themselves is that you see, like when your blood's coming out of your body, it's like you can see the bad stuff coming out of you and it makes you feel relieved and calm and, and then of course you get like the endorphin part of it as well which adds to that um, but also it's just like you feel the bad stuff coming out so that's a lot of the reason why people self harm and it's the same with watching people popping videos is seeing the this all this gunky stuff coming out is quite cathartic because it's like the bad stuff is being released and I actually have um, a little bit of uh, dermatillomania which is a basically a psychological condition where you um, pick at scabs and pimples and stuff on your skin like you just can't leave them alone if you feel any like weird texture on your skin you've got to fiddle with it um, or you scratch a lot you just have this massive thing on my leg where I used to always scratch my leg um, and since watching starting to watch pimple popping videos I've actually it's actually healed I've actually stopped doing it and I don't tend to pick and scratch at my own body quite so much so it's had like a massive impact on my life in that way so I that's one of the things that makes me calm. Um, so like when I go to bed at night, it's pretty much the last thing I do before I go to sleep is uh, watch a pimple popping video and I'll watch the same one like three or four times without any problem. I like new ones, but you know, I get happy when I see a new one, but 
I'll watch old ones. Uh, this is the CoverGirl Exact Lights in sapphire, black sapphire. You can't really tell. It's just I like it on the bottom lashes. I'll probably put some purple on top of that. Um, I'm just letting my uh, mascara dry. So while I do that, I am going to line my lips with this Kmart Nude Lip Pencil. I always line my lips and fill them in. Then I'm going to take the Kate by Rimmel number 45, which is just a nude. And I'm going to put a bit of a cargo lip gloss in Sahara over the top of that. Um, and the last question is, what makes you smile? Uh, my family makes me smile. Sometimes they make me want to, like, dig a hole in the backyard and bury them. But on the whole, my family makes me smile. Um, because they're, like, particularly my, um, my boys, James, David and Lucas, and my daughter, Ebony, they are uh, positive accomplishments that I've actually made. So seeing them makes me smile and seeing my partner makes me smile. I mean, not everybody would put up with, you know, a lot of um, partners would probably have wanted to walk away after what I've put him through for the last few years. Um, I'm not the easiest person to live with, <laughs> quite honestly. Um, but yeah, my family is what makes me smile. And my friends, like the, the close, closer friends that I've been making online, they're like super important to me. So yeah, that's what makes me smile. So this is basically my finished look. Um, I'll probably spray some um, Australia's finishing mist on it in a little bit when the mascara is not still soaking wet. Um, <laughs> So that is the mental health tag for World Mental Health Day, October 10th. I will leave the other people who are doing this collab down below, so don't forget to go and check them out. Give me a thumbs up if you like tag type videos and get ready with me. Get ready with me. Um, leave me. <laughs> Leave me a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments. And if you want to subscribe, click the button and click the bell to get notifications. And I'll see you in my next video. So, yeah.